Did you know that beer is one of the oldest and most loved drinks in the world? Imagine walking into a brewery where the air is filled with the rich aroma of malt and hops. Now picture that same brewery using cutting-edge technology to craft the perfect beer. Join us as we explore how science and tradition blend to create the perfect brew. Stay tuned to see how your favorite drink is crafted with the help of the latest tech advancements. Beer is produced in massive quantities, over 170 million barrels a year in the United States alone. It's made from just four natural ingredients, water, barley, hops, and yeast. But how do these simple components transform into the refreshing drink we enjoy? Let's find out. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more interesting videos. Now, let's get brewing. Beer, one of the world's most ancient and popular drinks, is crafted from just four essential ingredients. Water, barley, hops, and yeast. Let's take a closer look at each of these key components. Water forms the majority of beer's composition and plays a crucial role in the brewing process. The quality and mineral content of water can significantly impact the taste and character of the final brew. Next is barley, a cereal grain that has been used in brewing for thousands of years. Barley is preferred because it produces a lot of starch-digesting enzymes, which convert into fermentable sugars that eventually become alcohol. Hops are the flowers of the hop plant. They've been cultivated since the 9th century and are vital for adding bitterness, flavor, and aroma to beer. The compounds in hops, especially alpha acids, provide the bitterness, while lupulin gives the beer its distinctive aromatic notes, such as pine, citrus, or floral tones. Yeast is a single-celled fungus that is fundamental to the fermentation process. There are different types of yeast used in brewing, including ale yeast and lager yeast. Yeast converts the fermentable sugars in the wort into alcohol and carbon dioxide, giving beer its alcohol content and carbonation. The four main ingredients of beer play a unique and crucial role in creating the diverse range of beers enjoyed around the world. Now, let's see how these ingredients come together in the brewing process. The first step in malting is soaking the barley. Fully ripened barley grains are steeped in cold water until they are fully saturated. This soaking process usually lasts between 45 to 72 hours. During this time, the water is changed daily to ensure the grains stay clean and properly hydrated. After soaking, the barley is transferred to shallow tanks to germinate. Here, the grains are aerated and stirred to encourage germination. This process releases enzymes, such as malt diastase, which are essential for brewing. These enzymes convert the starches in the barley into fermentable sugars, which will later become alcohol during fermentation. Once germination is complete, usually after about six days, the barley is dried or roasted to halt the germination process. The timing and temperature of the roasting determine the flavor and color of the malt. Light roasting results in a pale malt, perfect for lighter beers while darker roasts create rich, robust flavors for darker beers. The end product of the malting process is known as malt. This malt is now ready to be mashed and continue its journey in the beer-making process. Malting is a critical step that influences the flavor, color, and overall quality of the beer. By carefully controlling each stage, soaking, germination, and roasting, brewers can craft a wide variety of beer styles. With the malt ready, the next step in brewing is mashing, where the malted barley will mix with hot water to extract those precious sugars. First, the malted barley needs to be milled. The grains are crushed into a coarse powder known as grist. This increases the surface area of the malt, making it easier for water to extract the sugars during mashing. Breweries use specialized milling equipment, such as roller mills or hammer mills, to break down the malted barley. These machines ensure that the grist is just the right consistency for mashing. Next, the grist is transferred to a mash tun, a large vessel made of copper or stainless steel. Here it's mixed with hot water to create a porridge-like mixture called mash. The temperature of the mash is carefully controlled 
starting around 100 degree Fahrenheit and gradually increasing to about 170 degree Fahrenheit. This temperature rise activates enzymes in the malt. These enzymes, such as amylase, break down the starches in the barley into simpler sugars. These sugars are essential for fermentation, as they will be converted into alcohol by the yeast later on. This step is crucial because the balance of sugars created during mashing affects the beer's flavor, body, and alcohol content. Once the mashing is complete, the mixture is transferred to another tun. Here, the liquid wort is separated from the solid grain husks. The wort is drawn out through the bottom layer of mash solids, which acts as a natural filter. Additional hot water is sprayed over the grains to rinse out any remaining sugars, ensuring maximum extraction. The result is a clear, sweet liquid known as wort. This wort is now ready to be boiled and hopped, setting the stage for fermentation. Every step in the mashing process is meticulously controlled to create the perfect wort, which is the foundation for brewing great beer. Once we have our sweet wort, it's time to move on to the next critical step in beer making, boiling and adding hops. The wort is transferred into large boiling kettles. These kettles are often made of gleaming copper and can be as tall as two stories high. Boiling the wort serves several important purposes. It sterilizes the wort, killing any unwanted microorganisms that could spoil the beer. It also helps to concentrate the wort, adjusting its sugar content. Now comes the exciting part, adding hops. Hops are the flowers of the hop plant, and they are crucial for giving beer its distinctive bitterness and aroma. Hops contain alpha acids, which are the primary bittering agents in beer. They also have compounds that contribute to the beer's flavor and aroma, ranging from pine and citrus to floral and herbal notes. When hops are added at the beginning of the boil, they contribute mainly to the beer's bitterness. The longer the hops boil, the more bitterness they impart to the beer. Hops added later in the boil, usually in the last 15 to 30 minutes, are responsible for the beer's flavor and aroma. This is where the brewer can get creative, adding layers of complexity to the beer's profile. The boiling process typically lasts between 60 to 90 minutes. During this time, proteins in the wort coagulate and settle out, a process known as hot break. This helps to clarify the beer. The brewer carefully monitors the boil, ensuring everything progresses perfectly. Precision is key to achieving the desired balance of bitterness, flavor, and aroma. Once the boil is complete, the wort is ready for the next stage in its transformation. But first, it needs to be cooled down quickly. In the next step, the hot wort will pass through a heat exchanger to bring it down to the right temperature for fermentation. The fermentation process is where the magic truly happens, transforming the sweet wort into the beer we all know and love. Fermentation begins in large, sanitized tanks. Once the wort is boiled and cooled, it's time to add the yeast. Yeast is a crucial ingredient. This single-celled fungus feeds on the sugars in the wort, producing alcohol and carbon dioxide as byproducts. Primary fermentation is the initial phase. It's when the yeast is most active, consuming the majority of the sugars. This process typically lasts between one to two weeks. During this time, the mixture is kept at a controlled temperature to ensure the yeast works efficiently. The yeast converts the sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide is released, creating the fizz we associate with beer. But some beers undergo a secondary fermentation phase, especially those that benefit from additional aging. In this phase, the beer continues to mature. This step can take place in the same tank or in a new one. It allows the flavors to develop more complexity and the beer to clarify further. Secondary fermentation can last from a few weeks to several months, depending on the beer style. This additional time helps smooth out flavors and improve the overall balance of the beer. Following fermentation, the beer enters the conditioning and maturation phase. Here, it continues to develop its flavor profile and achieve the desired clarity and carbonation. During conditioning, any remaining yeast and solids settle to the bottom. This step is crucial for creating a smooth, balanced beer. 
Sometimes, brewers add a small amount of priming sugar before sealing the beer for natural carbonation. This can enhance the beer's texture and mouthfeel. Quality control is key throughout the fermentation process. Brewers frequently test the beer, monitoring alcohol content, flavor, and clarity. This ensures that every batch meets the high standards required for a perfect pint. Fermentation is truly the soul of beer making. It's a fascinating process where biology, chemistry, and artistry come together to create the beverage we enjoy. Cheers to the yeast and the magic it performs. Once the beer is fully matured and conditioned, it's time for the final stage, packaging. This step is crucial to ensure that the beer you enjoy is fresh and flavorful. The first part of packaging is filtration or centrifugation. This removes any remaining solids and yeast from the beer, ensuring a clear, consistent product. Filtration helps maintain the beer's clarity and enhances its visual appeal. Next, we adjust the carbonation levels. Some beers need a little extra fizz, which we achieve by adding priming sugar or injecting carbon dioxide. This step is vital for achieving the right mouthfeel and enhancing the beer's overall taste. Now, the beer is ready to be bottled. Bottling lines are amazing inventions of modern engineering, capable of filling thousands of bottles per hour. First, the bottles are sanitized to ensure no contamination. Then, they are filled with beer, leaving just the right amount of headspace. In addition to bottles, many beers are packaged in cans. Canning is similar to bottling but offers some unique advantages like better light protection and ease of transport. Cans are rapidly filled and sealed to maintain freshness and prevent any exposure to air. For draft beer lovers, kegging is the preferred packaging method. Kegs are filled with beer and pressurized with CO2 to keep the beer fresh and carbonated. Kegs are ideal for bars and restaurants, allowing them to serve fresh beer on tap. Once the beer is in its final container, it's time for labeling. Labels are applied with precision, ensuring that every bottle, can, and keg proudly displays its brand. Branding is more than just a label. It tells the story of the beer and the brewery. Throughout the packaging process, quality control is paramount. Brewers perform regular checks to ensure every package meets their high standards. From taste tests to packaging inspections, every step is monitored to guarantee the best possible product. After beer is brewed, fermented, and packaged, this is where the distribution process comes into play. Once packaged, beer is transported to warehouses. These facilities store the beer at optimal temperatures to maintain its freshness and quality. Warehouses are equipped with climate control systems to ensure the beer remains at the right temperature until it's ready to be shipped out. Distributors receive orders from retailers, bars, and restaurants. These orders are then fulfilled from the warehouse stock. Workers use advanced inventory management systems to track and organize the beer, ensuring that the right products are sent out quickly and accurately. Next, the beer is loaded onto trucks for transportation. This step is critical to maintain the integrity of the beer. Temperature-controlled trucks are often used, especially for draft and craft beers, to prevent spoilage and maintain quality during transit. The trucks then deliver the beer to various retailers, bars, and restaurants. Timing is key to ensure that the beer arrives fresh and ready for sale. Deliveries are typically scheduled to align with retailers' demand patterns, ensuring that there's always a fresh supply on hand. Once at the retail location, the beer is stored properly to preserve its quality. Retailers often have dedicated storage areas, like coolers or refrigerated sections, to keep the beer at the ideal temperature. Retailers use a method called stock rotation to ensure that older stock is sold first, maintaining the freshness of the beer. This first-in, first-out method helps prevent older beer from sitting too long and losing its optimal flavor. Finally, the beer reaches you, the consumer. Whether you buy it from a store or enjoy it at a bar, the distribution process ensures that your beer is fresh and delicious. The journey from the brewery to your hand involves careful planning and precise execution at every step. Quality control doesn't stop at the brewery. 
Distributors and retailers also play a role in ensuring the beer you drink is top-notch. Regular checks and inspections are performed throughout the distribution chain to catch any issues before they reach the consumer. And there you have it. The incredible journey of beer, from simple ingredients to the refreshing beverage you love. Next time you enjoy a cold one, you'll know the amazing process behind it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with fellow beer lovers. Cheers.